Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan. This is Super Review, and this is the Eco Gems OH1S. Interesting naming structure there, but this is the latest IM from Eco, and it's actually been, I checked my channel just to, to figure this out for certain. It's actually been two years since Eco came out with their last IM, which was the OH10. And it's interesting that even though that IM came out about two years ago, under $200, that's still kind of one of my top picks. And so when they came out here with the GEMS OH1S, uh, I was pretty interested to see how this thing would stack up. Now, just to get this out of, out of the way up front, their naming structure of the original IEM was the OH1, and then they came out with the OH10, which was like the model step up. This is the OH1S. It's priced, however, at the same price range as the OH10. This is a $200 IM, and the driver configuration is the exact same that you've had with other Eco IMs. So you get one dynamic driver, one balanced armature, and that's the IM. Um, not a whole lot else to talk about, although I'll just say, you know, like my other reviews, this is a live stream. So if you're watching now live, you have any questions about the gems or anything else that we talk about today, drop it in the live chat. At the end of the review, We'll have a little back and forth conversation. Hopefully I can answer all of your questions. And if you're watching now not live, that's cool. Just subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, and then YouTube will let you know next time I'm live so that you can be around. But for now, let's just go ahead and dive into the review here of the OH1S Gems. Should we just call it the Gems? Man, that's gonna be hard for me to say, but OH1S is also a bit of a mouthful. Let's, let's try and call it the Gems. Give it the old roadie wrap. Uh, while I set this thing up and we'll talk about first of all what comes inside the box of the gems So here's the packaging. I did a full unboxing video a couple of weeks ago If you're interested in checking it out I would go back to my my history and check out that video But I'll give you the quick the quick rundown uh, you do get an interesting little carry pouch here This is sort of a I mean, it's not quite leather. I don't think but it's pretty fairly convincing and it looks pretty nice, but honestly, it's a little bit on the weird side. You know, you can see it's just kind of like a flat case. Uh, it's perfectly functional for carrying your IMs around and stuff like that, but the way that it clasps close is just with the tie. Not my favorite case, but I don't know. I guess it's interesting to see someone try something different. Eco does also include a collectible pin, which I'm gonna punch in on this just because I think this is actually really cool. I wish more manufacturers included little tchotchkes like this because this seems to me like the sort of thing I would use if I wore like baseball caps or something like that. Um, so pretty into that pin. They also include an MMCX connector remover, which yes, this the, the GEMS does use MMCX cables, unlike Eco's other IAMs. Um, not a thing I've necessarily used, but if you have trouble removing MMCX cables, that can be a relief to have. Uh, and then the other stuff that comes in here is, well, this pretty wide selection of ear tips and I'll be honest, some of these are pretty weird. Uh, let's zoom in on these so we can take a look at it. So the at the top row here is just a selection of fairly standard foam ear tips. Um, not too much to write home about these things. In fact, when I was listening to these, I actually used the foam tips, which is not typical for me. And that's because, well, look at these silicone tips. These things are funky AF. Um, that's a, that's the, the small size ear tip and ostensibly this is the extra large. I'll be honest, I did try these ear tips initially because you know I generally do prefer silicone tips and I, I prefer to use the stock tips that come with an earphone, but these things I just found really pretty awkward to fit and I guess I'll give it to Eco for trying something new, but honestly, I do not think that this is better than the standard stock silicone tip. So, there's that. Now, um, you might have noticed a thing about these tips is that they're a little bit ovular, ovular in shape here. Although curiously, the uh, the foam tips are not. They're pretty standard round shape. But if we go over here to the, the gems itself, and we'll start now by talking about the, the build quality and, and sort of the physical aspects of it. Because I'm talking about tips, I'll go and dive right into uh, talking about this nozzle, which is curiously ovular. Um, it's interesting. Now, I did find that this fit, you know, fine with both the, the these odd silicone tips, which are ovular, as well as the foam tips, which are not. Uh, and as well, I even tried some aftermarket ear tips, something like a, a final E-type ear tip. Honestly, it seemed to work perfectly fine. Um, it's still 
got me plenty of grip around this oddly shaped nozzle and seemed to seal as well as you would want it to. So I, it's it's an interesting choice. I don't know that it's necessarily better, but I also, you know, I was maybe a little bit concerned about it, but I don't know that it's necessarily worse. Um, I'll talk more about the fit in a second. Let's go ahead and talk first though about this cable that comes on the gems. And honestly, there's some things I like about this cable a lot. Like I think aesthetically, it is gorgeous. Um, just punch in on here and you can kind of see it's like a, a smoked silicone covering blue and red wires that are wrapped around. And it is maybe a subtle effect, but I think that aesthetically this thing is just phenomenal. It's a little bit on the thin and wiry side. Um, so maybe not the most appealing in that sense, but honestly, I think this thing is a really nice looking cable to look at. You got pretty nice little metal hardware down here, a 3.5 millimeter connector, standard stuff, uh, a fairly small chin splint, chin splinch, uh, Y split and uh, a, a chin cinch that is, you know, somewhat functional, but more or less slides itself around. Um, that said, I don't, I don't love this cable for a couple of reasons. And, and the primary reason is it's just really stiff. I found that in practice, you know, it wasn't too much of a problem, but you can kind of see here it's standing up. Uh, it's a little bit memory prone. You, and you can see that it's kind of, kind of bend itself back into place. I wish I could get this exact aesthetic with a cable that was a little bit softer, maybe a little bit thicker, but I would honestly deal with, or I'd be pretty happy with just a cable that's a little bit softer. Now, let's talk about the buds. Um, these things, you might not be able to tell here. Let me actually go ahead and pull one in for reference. These are actually quite a bit smaller than the buds on the original Eco OH1 and OH10. So this is the OH10, and you can see side by side, this is quite a bit larger. Uh, another thing that was interesting about the OH10 is these things are really quite heavy, uh, and that's not the case here with the gems. These things are still, they appear to have some sort of aluminum outer here, uh, and they still got a decent amount of weight to them, like they feel nicely made, but they're not excessively heavy and they are kind of small. A little Dorito shaped maybe, um, but I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna make Dorito jokes, even though I guess I just kind of did. Um, but aesthetically, I think I actually really like this aspect of them is that there are actually two pieces of aluminum that kind of sandwich what looks like a, a plastic or a resin core with, that lets light pass through it. And honestly, I just I think it's a really pretty handsome look. Uh, again, it's on the smaller side, which is nice for fit. But, you know, aesthetically, I'm pretty into that. And then the other thing worth calling out is that the gems actually comes in two different colors uh, with Eco's other stuff. You either got blue or black, depending on which model you bought, um, but they were completely different models. Here with the gems, they actually come in blue or black, uh, but you get to pick which color you want, depending on, or just, you know, sticking with the same model. Uh, the black here, the, the metal bits, the aluminum bits are black, while that resin or that plastic core is actually kind of a deep purple. I think it's a cool look, although just, you know, for my personal aesthetic preferences, I think the blue is definitely the looker. Now, let's go ahead and talk about fit. And I already mentioned that these things are really small and that has some, I think, pretty good uh, side effects when it comes to fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this thing into the old, the old ear canal and uh, punch in so you can take a look. And so it's just, it fits really quite compact in my ear. Um, it's not very bulky. The nozzle on it, I find to be of, you know, it's a little bit on the long side, um, but not overly long. So that just means that I get actually a pretty nice seal and a decent level of security when I'm using the foam ear tips. Um, when I was using the silicone ear tips, I couldn't really get a strong secure fit. It wasn't that great. Uh, but here with the foam tips, honestly, like I'm pretty happy with the fit. Now, the only downside with using foam tips, you might have noticed me do it, is, and this is part of why I don't really like using foam tips, is that you usually wanna compress the foam tip before inserting it and then kind of let it fill out your ear. So it's just a bit of a, a lengthy kind of fiddly process, right? I'm sitting here waiting for it to expand and fill up my ear and create a seal versus using a normal silicone ear tip, you just kind of plonk it in. Uh, and you get that seal right away. So now that I've got that sealed, this thing is fitting in nice and secure. And yeah, generally pretty happy with it. This is a very easy earphone to sleep with because it's so small. Um, yeah, generally generally dig it. The only maybe minor uh, complaint I'll add on top of this is that, and I did talk about this thing being MMCX cables instead of two pin cables like the other ones. A side effect of that is that the cable 
can rotate left and right, which can be a, a benefit in some cases, because sometimes uh, the angle of a, an earphone can be a problem for fit. But honestly, I just found it to be a little bit fiddly, uh, especially during that fitting process. And combined with, you know, the, the compression of the foam tips, it was, it just meant that the, the whole fitting process is a little bit more fiddly than usual. So um, one other thing that I wanted to touch on now, uh, and I don't normally talk about this kind of stuff when I'm doing reviews because I don't generally have the experience to touch on this thing really, um, but let's just talk about quality control for, for a moment here with the OH-1S gems. Um, if you noticed during my un initial unboxing video, I actually had an, an issue with the first gems that I that I pulled out. Um, there was a, an issue with one of the MMCX connectors. It was actually on the unit itself and not the cable, um, where it just didn't make a connection. As I unboxed the unit, I actually found that there were some other QC issues um, where like channel matching between the units that I had wasn't phenomenal. And then also, I'll zoom in on this example, um, just to, to demonstrate the, uh, these at the, on the nozzles, they've got these replaceable filters uh, and I could pop it off, but I could also embarrass myself by not being able to, but just trust me, these filters pop off and Eco actually includes a couple of spares, which is cool. But one of the IMs that I got um, stock, it had the filter frame, but it didn't have the screen inside of it. So it was kind of odd to have three different QC issues with one shipment of, of, of IEM. So I actually reached out to Eco. They were, you know, they, they checked their production lines and um, they were pretty good about responding to it, to be honest. And they actually sent me out a couple of new units. So that's what I've been reviewing is actually the new replacement units. But it is worth calling out that one of the replacement units, um, not on the screen that was pre-installed in the earphone, but on one of the spares, it was also missing the mesh. And then I did notice that on HeadFi, there was another consumer out there actually that bought a gems I uh, mentioned that they had actually run into the same issue with the MCX connectors where the cable just didn't really make a connection. So I'm sure Eco is going to be good about replacing those for anyone that encounters those issues. But because of the, the, the quantity of QC issues that came up in my time with this, I did have to mention that. Generally, I think this thing feels like a really nicely built thing and Eco stuff has kind of always been really nice solid build quality but it seems like there might be some issues at least with the initial production run here on the gems that said let's go ahead and talk about the sound and like i always do uh, i'll start by just giving you a general rundown of the sound signature here on the gems oh1s and i think also worth bringing into context the sound signature that eco has been known for so both the oh1 and the oh10 uh, here's the oh10 again for reference both of these earphones are known for being being bass head earphones, right? They're not necessarily like totally bass dominant, but they've got really nice bass, especially on the OH10. And so I think Eco just kind of has built up a reputation of being an earphone for people that like really nice bass. Not necessarily, again, all about the bass, but really quite nice bass. And so that's kind of the expectations that I went into here with the gems. But if you rem remember, if you recall during the unboxing and the initial measurement, which is up on squig.link, by the way, if you want to check it out, the GEMS, curiously, is not a bassy earphone. In fact, I would describe the tuning here as bass light. The, you could describe this as, as somewhat of a, of a neutral tune, I suppose, much more upper mid-range and treble focused. So yeah, I would say that this is roughly a bright neutral earphone, which is frankly a surprise from Eco. But is it a good surprise? Let's dive into that. What are the things I like about the sound here on the, the gems? Um, you know, I think what bass is here, again, this is definitely not a bassy earphone. And if you're come, if you're looking for a bassy earphone or you're looking for a, a, an earphone that has fantastic bass, I would probably look somewhere else, but what bass is here is actually pretty decent. It's nice and punchy, um, fairly tight. It doesn't bleed at all, obviously. There's just not a lot of bass there to bleed. Um, so what bass is here? It's, you know, it's not that bad. Uh, and then I would think, I would say too, that the, the gems is fairly strong on imaging and definition and clarity. I think even the OH10 was also pretty, pretty strong above average in terms of imaging quality. <clears throat> 
but uh, um, this kind of takes it, I want to say, a, a, a little bit next level. Um, a lot of that's just going to come down to the tuning, frankly. Uh, the tuning on this being, you know, brighter, more forward in the upper mid-range, that's going to have the effect of just exaggerating the detail or the definition between instruments and stuff like that. And that comes across with a little bit stronger imaging. So generally pretty good there too. Uh, and then I think also, you know, detail on this is pretty, pretty, pretty solid. Not necessarily super standout, but you know, it's not the highest resolution, but it's pretty impressive, uh, especially when you consider that the OH, uh, the OH1S Gems is doing everything, pretty much everything but the bass is being handled by uh, a single balanced armature. and. Honestly, like Eco probably has some of the best execution of single bound, single BA stuff um, that I've heard, which is cool. Um, there is the dynamic driver under the base for the base. So just to clarify, this is not a one X BA earphone, but that one X BA, that single balance armature is definitely doing a lot and it does it pretty well. It comes across not necessarily um, as two dimensional as you might expect for a lot of other um, single BA units. So that's what I like about the gems. But let's dive into and talk about what I don't love about the, the sound here. And honestly, I think the tonal balance on this thing is just, I wrote down the word whack, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and stick with that. I think the tonal balance on the gems is just not great. Um, obviously part of this is my expectations, right? Coming into a new Eco earphone, I expected a bassy tune, but if you know my preferences, I'm actually not that big of a fan of bassy earphones just it's not what i'm looking for in my music so i a, a mid-range focus neutralish sound signature maybe a little bit bright neutral i can get behind that unfortunately i think it's just not very well done here on the gems uh the bass you know obviously there's not a lot of bass there but maybe the biggest concern is that it rolls off pretty significantly in the sub bass so while you get a decent amount of punch um, from what mid bass there is there's just not a lot of texture in the, the sub bass frequencies here with the gems. And then the mid range tuning is not too bad. Actually, I would say, you know, it's a little bit on the forward side with the upper mid range. So vocals are going to come across a bit forward, but the bigger concern for me is more about the treble, uh, the, the lower treble and especially the mid treble. So I'll say the lower treble is a little bit on the forward side. Um, it comes across, I think, stronger than it even looks like in a frequency response, and probably that's because of how lean it is below 1000 hertz. It's just a very lean tuned earphone, and because of that, what emphasis there is in sort of the 4 to 5k region, we'll call that the presence region, it just, it, it makes it so that vocals come across really quite forward, a little bit on the edgy side, a little bit on sort of the, 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 the raspy side. Um, and then I think the bigger problem is the the pretty significant spike that I hear at around seven and a half thousand hertz, so 7.5k hertz. I did a sign sweep just to validate that this is where I was hearing it. Holy, it is like staring at the sun levels of bright in that region. And it's really unfortunate because it frankly makes this kind of a, a difficult earphone to listen to. Even if I was fine with the leanness in the, the lower mid range and the, the bass, Frankly, that treble makes this really just, I wrote down the word unbearable, and I think that that is not too harsh a word. Um, it makes vocals very sibilant. Uh, it makes me wince. It makes things like cymbals just kind of ring and crash and like hit just way harder than they ought to. Um, so that is generally what I think about the sound here on the gems. And like I typically or I have been doing, um, I'm going to bring in some other earphones so we can kind of give it some context, some comparisons. I'm going to pull these things in. Let me put this thing back on the cable. This is the original. I don't want to say the original. This is the OH10. This is the ear, the eco earphone that came out about two years ago. And then this is the Tonch Jimhana. This is probably my personal favorite earphone under $200. Uh, and then I'll wind, I'll roadie wrap up the gems so that we have neat little bunch to move around the table as we throw these things into rankings in a handful of different categories that to me were important. So I'll start with, by actually just talking about the thing that's probably the least important to me, but I know is probably important to a lot of people who are watching a video by Eco is how do these things rank in terms of bass? And I'm going to I'm going to use this as, you know, an opportunity to rank them in terms of quantity as well as quality. I'll talk about all of them, uh, but ultimately I'm going to rank them like this. I'm going to say 
that the uh, the base king, and this should not be too surprising, is going to be the original OH-10. Uh, the Tanj Damhana follows up. Their base here is definitely not super, super elevated and super emphasized, but it's got, um, it's still got a pretty nice depth to it, especially in the sub base focus. I think the, uh, the Hana base is actually pretty good. Um, tuning wise, this would actually be my personal preference in terms of base levels. There is more base here, but this is a little bit more mid bassy, but still leans well into um, the sub base as well. And then the last place I think maybe obviously is gonna be the gems. I'll leave that down here. The, the, there's just, there's not much base. It is quite base light. And again, what base is there? It's not badly done. It's not muddy, it's not smeary, but neither are any of these. And if you're looking for a quality base response, I think you're gonna be a lot happier with these two. Now, maybe base isn't what you're after. Maybe you're just looking for a nice tonal response. How would I rank these? Just generally in terms of tuning, and this is where my preferences are going to come in come in strong. Um, this is how I'd rank them in terms of tuning. I think the the Hana is my preference. It's still a little bit V-shaped in its tuning. Uh, it's a little bit forward in the upper mid range and treble, um, but generally just like a nice light. Uh, of the three here, probably the strongest mid range focus, and for that reason, uh, I really really like the Hana. Next up would be the OH-10, which is a little bit V-shaped for my preferences, which means that the mid-range, you get some vocal emphasis. This is very much sort of a, a big bass, big vocals, but sort of the mid-range in between there gets a little bit crunched. Um, so definitely not the mid-range focus here, but what you do have, uh, I think this is actually a really well executed V-shaped sound signature. Um, really actually pretty decent treble performance given the fact that it is so much um, focus on the bass, but yeah, generally pretty happy with the tuning here for what it is. And then it's going to leave us with the gems, which honestly should probably be like, like down here or something. Like the tuning is just, I think it's not good. I think it's, it's neutral gone wrong. It's yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's too bright. Like, like I talked about the tuning, especially on the lower treble, the mid treble, it's just way, way too harsh. Um, rank them in terms of let's say separation and imaging sort of that definition um and honestly i'm gonna leave them kind of in the same ranking although you might be able to argue that the 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 gems moves up a, a spot the the hana is just kind of my standout like this is one of i find the 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 best performers in terms of definition and imaging and really giving you that sense that an instrument is right here and another instrument is right here um, the Hana does that absolutely the best for me. I think the OH-10 is definitely no slouch in terms of the imaging department. In fact, it's generally pretty good. I would say it's above average for certain. Um, but, you know, I guess if I'm going to throw some some bone to the gems, uh, that extra emphasis in the upper mid range and treble does give it an added sense of, again, clarity, which can have the effect of... Um, just creating a stronger sense of definition between the different instruments. Again, it's not necessarily a wanted uh, a wanted way to do that and, and achieve that goal, but I think if I'm if I'm being honest, it does achieve that. And then in terms of let's just say vocal performance, this is a pretty broad category. Uh, I'm gonna go like this with yeah maybe maybe we'll put some space between these where I think vocal performance on the Hana is the best. Again, I think that. While I would still describe this as kind of a, a bright, mild V, this is still probably the, the mid-range standout of the three here, which has the effect of vocals coming across really quite nicely. I think this is the one that probably gives you the best micro contrast in terms of vocal texture and stuff like that. Where the Eco OH-1, this is a little bit more macro contrasty, um, not so strong in the vocal presentation, but they are nice and forward and honestly, they're not harsh. Uh, really no issues with sibilance on either of these two. So generally pretty good there. And then unfortunately the gems, it is fairly forward in the vocal region because there's not a lot of meat underneath, um, underneath 1000 Hertz, but it does also come at the expense of vocals coming across a little thin, quite a bit thin. Uh, and then you have that issue with a little bit of sharpness, raspiness in the vocals, and then really strong sibilance. So I think that's going to do it for my comparisons and my review here of the Eco Gems OH-1S. Out of five stars, I'm going to give it, don't be surprised, just two stars. Um, this is not really an earphone that I can recommend. Again, I'm 
pretty bummed about that for a number of reasons. One, because I really like the Eco OH10. If Eco told me we're working on a, a neutral tuned version of, of our IEM, I'd actually be really excited about that. Even though it's not necessarily what I expect, I like what they've done with their other earphones. And if they're taking that same, that same, that same accomplishment and applying it toward a neutral tuned IEM, I would be frankly pretty excited about that. And I should be excited here about the gems, but unfortunately, I think the tuning is just not very well done. So that is my review of the OH1S Gems. If you're still interested in checking it out, I do have a link in the description down below. And while you're down there, if you found this video helpful, you liked it, whatever, please do hit the like button. It actually helps me out. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. That also helps me out. Uh, and ding the YouTube bell if you want to be alerted for the next time I'm live. And then you can be here having a conversation like I'm about to have with the folks that are here live right now. Uh, if you're not here live, well, I'll catch you on the next one. And if you are here live, let's hang out. All right, folks, let me uh, let me catch up with live chat a little bit. And uh, and how we doing? It's Wednesday, right? That is a Wednesday afternoon, almost evening. And uh, the early shout outs, Big Boss. Thanks for being first. Thanks for talking to me about Ojai, California. Believe... I believe I rode my motorcycle through Ojai. Muhammad Rabi, nice to see you there as well. Thanks for joining early. Cheebs, how you doing? Gunner Jones, yo, what's up? Rob Hawk, greetings, greetings to you as well. Marcos Augusto, how you doing? Jake Cap with the bold prediction. Uh, I predict these will get negative one stars. Well, you were a little off. I definitely don't have the graphic for negative one stars, but there you go. Martin Ferreira, how's it going? War Samir, how you doing? And Wizard with, I think the question that was definitely on my mind is will it live up to the name? And unfortunately, this one is, I think a big swing and a miss, unfortunately for Eco. Um, I I mean, look, I don't, I don't run an IEM company out there. Um, there's probably a lot of things to, to consider, but I would pretty strongly consider, honestly, like just starting over and, 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 and trying again. Martin Ferrer saying waifu in the box never misses. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I mean, the I think Eco's art style is definitely a little bit different than some of the other anime-ish box arts this is a little bit more graphic and I, I i think i i think i like this better i think this is a little bit better design if i'm being perfectly honest sangram asking me any plans on reviewing the unique melody mes2 Oof, i would really love to review the mest but uh no time soon unfortunately Big Boss saying there's something about innocent collectibles that can make a product more enticing. Uh, for example, the uh, the Prisma Azul came with a little metal card, the Tantrum Oxygen comes with a metal sticker, etc. Yeah, and I think, just to clarify, I think you are referring to um, this little collectible pin, which, again, I'm pretty into this thing. Like, it's it's nicely made. Uh, it's handsome. It's, an, you know, Eco's got a nice-looking logo. They even have one of these pretty fancy fasteners on the back of it where uh, I don't know if, I don't know what the name of this is. I'm not a pen collector person, but um, it's like a, a safety, a safety fastener. It's just, this is a nice touch. Uh, and the OH10 also came with this same pen. And I think that's a, I think you're, I think you're right, Big Boss. I think that is a thing that it would be nice if more manufacturers did stuff like that, especially when you're getting into expensive stuff like I don't necessarily need 10 different styles of ear tips, but you want to throw in a collectible pin that's going to make it feel a little bit more special. And I think really ties in or like really connects the, the brand to the consumer in a way that like the consumer starts to love. And this is me just kind of putting on like my marketing hat. I'm not a marketer, uh, but it feels like it's pretty smart marketing.
Planet Jace, good morning from Australia. Good day. Once again, I'm your Dirty Work audio seeker and glad to catch another live stream. Glad you could join me as well. Are there any things, this is actually an interesting question. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of content on YouTube that I like to consume in audio format. Um, you know, whether I'm watching like an MKBHD podcast, which I can watch visually, or I can just kind of put it on the background and walk around the house and listen to it. Um, car reviews are actually pretty good for this as well. Um, curiously, are there any things, Jace, that I could do that would make this even better for an audio listener like you? Obviously I still got to show stuff because people want to see that, but maybe I'll, maybe I'll describe it in like just excruciating detail or not. Ishan, hey, how's it going? Nice to see you again. Or Samir with chin sphincter. Yeah, that was kind of what I ended up saying by accident there, huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm going to get a YouTube strike for that one. Muhammad Rabi asking me, what's my opinion on copper versus silver plated copper cables? Um, my honest opinion about about cable material and makeup like that is that it doesn't matter. It really does not matter. Now, I'm not a, an electrician. I'm not doing, I'm not manufacturing these things. I don't know all the real strong differences, um, but I have not, I have spent basically zero time thinking about what kind of metal is going into my cable. The amount or the, the degree that I have spent time thinking about what kind of metals are in my cables is when people have made specific claims about, let's say a, an all copper ear or all copper cable changing the sound of an earphone. And that actually, that was a, a thing that we talked about during the, uh, the file FH five S review. There were a number of people saying that that earphone just can't be listened to on the stock cable. You got to get a copper cable and it changes the sound. And as an open-minded person, I, you know, I, I went into it pretty skeptical, but pretty open-minded. It's like, all right, let's, let's throw up, throw that cable on the earphone. I can hook it up to my, my measurement rig and see if the frequency response changes because if there's going to be an audible change, that's probably where it's going to show up the most obviously. And there was, there was zero difference. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think it just doesn't matter. Now, if it, if you are into sort of like the, the jewelry aspect of it, you just want really nice things. Sure, you know, find out whatever metal is more important to you. I actually, I have zero preference for metals. I'm not much of a jewelry person, so I don't know if copper or silver is more desirable as a jewelry. Um, but if you just, and I, I'm saying jewelry and not necessarily in like the literal jewelry sense, but in like the way that, you know, people like to collect knives and you get a knife that looks really cool. Maybe you care about what kind of metal it's made out of titanium. It's really lightweight. It makes it so it's really good for fighting or something like that. Um, I'm not into that kind of stuff. So, you know, in my opinion, get what's important to you, but I would not, I would not expect audible sound differences unless you're really on them yellow pills. You're on the, the high res placebo pills, in which case, you know, all power to you. If you get, if you get value out of it, I'm not here to tell you that you're wrong and that you shouldn't do that. Um, just if I'm trying to set up your expectations, my, my setup would be don't expect audible differences between cables, unless something's wrong, which can happen. Big boss saying the purple resin is sick. So you, are you, are you falling on the side of the, uh, the purple gems is the better looking one versus the blue one. Let me, let me pull these both in so we can enjoy them both. I'm actually kind of interested in a vote for the people that are still here. Uh, which of these do you think is the better looking one? If, if you love the sound of one of them, which one would you be most enticed about buying? My preference is definitely for the blue one, partly because there's just not a lot of blue earphones and this is like a little bit more unique. Uh, but I think I also just, I like the, the single more consistent color scheme versus the, the, the two, oh, the two color scheme actually is pretty well done here. Maybe this looks a little bit Decepticon-y and I've always been kind of an Autobots guy.
still catching up with chat. Uh, Connor Ferry asked me, which watch am I wearing? And so that is an interesting question. I will go ahead and throw it into view here. This is a, a Pebble 2. This is a, a watch, I think it came out in 2016. So this thing's almost five years old at this point. Um, but yeah, this is a, a Pebble smartwatch, uh, not too complicated, um, but I quite like it. And in fact, the watch face here is a watch face that I designed and, and built with a friend. So it kind of means a little something special to me. So yeah, I don't know. This is, that's my watch. Unfortunately, they don't make them anymore, but you can still find them on eBay for around a hundred bucks or less. And they still seem to function. Big Boss asking, what do I use to run sign sweeps? And that's a good question. Um, I should link, I'll link it in the Discord server. Uh, Big Boss, I know you're in the Discord server, so that that's effective. For anyone else that's interested, there is a link to my Discord server in the description. Um, but yeah, there's just a website. I don't even I don't even know the name of it offhand right now, but it's I have it bookmarked and um, it's a really simple tool. You just, you hit play and it's really obnoxious. Every time I do it, my wife looks at me because she can hear it like ringing out of my ears. Um, it's not comfortable, but uh, it's a good way to figure out where there are either resonances or peaks in the frequency response. Das Ninja Stick saying, sounds like the gems are outrageous. Truly, truly outrageous. Yeah, I, you could say that they generate a little bit of outrage. Sam Gorin saying, Unbearable, huh? That sucks. I kind of liked how these looked. Maybe not $200 for a painful sound. And eh, look liked though. Yeah, okay. I, I think I interpreted that correctly. Yeah, uh, I, I unfortunately just, I, I don't I don't like listening to these. I love the way they look. I think the build quality is quite nice. And again, the cable, um, it's got some problems, but I could live with the cable. I'd be pretty happy with it if I'm perfectly honest. If this thing sounded good and it doesn't. Where one nation saying the gems are ironically not a gem. Should write headlines. Timmy Treetop saying the OH10s are really good, a bit bloated in the base, but still pretty fun. And I think that's right. Yeah, I'd say that the the original, I keep saying the original, but the OH10 is definitely bassier than my preference. It is definitely a base, I would describe a base dominant earphone. Um, but for what it is, I think it's actually pretty well done. So yeah, it's more bass than I want, but if you're looking for a lot of bass, the, the OH-10 is a pretty easy recommendation. Even still today, even though it's been two years since it came out, still a pretty good rec. Rob Hawk asking, have I had a chance to compare the new HANA and the original yet? And if so, can I give a hint? I, the answer is yes, I have. I don't know if I wanna give a hint. The review will be coming within the next couple of days, yeah. Um, I'm planning to do the review on Friday. It might happen on Saturday, but the review for the new HANA, that'll be coming very soon. And if you want a preview, well, I'll just show it to you. This is the new Townsh Gym HANA. So the review for this will be coming again, either Friday, probably Saturday, Friday or Saturday. Um, subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, ding the bell for the new HANA if you want to check out the review for that. But no spoilers. There are probably some spoilers in the Discord server though. Rob Saul asking, have I reviewed the KZ ZSN Pro X? And no, I reviewed the original ZSN and then the ZSN Pro, uh, but I never reviewed the X version. I never heard that version. Do you know what's different about it? I think I've seen it. It looks like they changed up the, the physical design a little bit, like they maybe just changed the colors, but I don't know anything else about the differences. Louis, Louis saying, I'm debating between a file FH3 and the Moondrop Aria. Which one would you go with? So I think I, I think I compared the FH3 and the Aria in my review of the Aria. So if you want more detail, I would go back and watch that review. Or you could go back and watch my review of the FH3 where I definitely compared it to the Starfield. And the Starfield and the Aria are pretty comparable. Um, 
but I'm just saying, I'm going to answer your question, but if you want more detail, you could dive into those videos. Uh, my preference is personally for the file FH3. I think the, the tuning is more mid-range focus with a really nice sub bass presence on it. Um, you know, there's something to be said for the Starfield and the Aria. I think they've got really nice, um, really nice kind of just tuning that'll work for everybody, but they're not super strong in terms of uh, just maybe a sense of openness, a sense of uh, imaging and staging and stuff like that. They do an okay job of that, but I think the FH3 is kind of next level, at least in that price bracket. And so that's why I like the FH3 personally. Wes Miller with the exact same question right after that. Wow, maybe I feel like I, I should do a video specifically comparing the FH3 and the Aria, unless I already did that, which I might have. Darkness Deep saying, in this price range, your favorite is Hana. Would there be a spoiler about the new Hana? Say hello to Brazil. What's up, Brazil? Uh, obrigado for watching, but uh, no, no spoilers yet. Gunnar Jones asking Clairvoyance or Monarch. Both of them are too large for my ears. Uh, and I only listened to the Clairvoyance for a little bit. But from what I listened to of the Clairvoyance, it seemed a more coherent sound to me. Where the, the bass I found on the Monarch to be a little bit distracting. Maybe a lot of it distracting. It's just kind of kind of giga. Um, in, a, in a way that, I don't know. It could be fun. Don't get me wrong. It can definitely be fun with the right music. But I found it mostly kind of distracting where the clairvoyance tuning, it just seemed like a more coherent tuning to me. Marcos Augusto saying, I really like the OH-10 and I don't consider it a bass head at IM, but a bass with excellent quality and a good tonality overall. It's a shame that the gems won't do it. And yeah, it's very possible that my definition of a bass head I am is a little bit skewed as I'm just not that that much of a bass guy myself. Um, I know that it's, in terms of like the earphones that I like that have a lot of bass, the OH-10 has some of the most bass. Um, so that's where I feel comfortable, I guess, calling it a bass head I am. But yeah, if you're listening to something like does the blonde BLO3, does that count as a bass heads I am? Because that's probably even a little bit more bass, um, especially in the mid bass region. Darkness Deep saying, I love these cable discussions. In my opinion, it's very placebo, but I confess I wanted to experiment with silver threads. Interesting. That's another thing about cables, the, the whole cable stuff that um, I, I guess I want to say bothers me. Um, you look on a, a, an AliExpress listing or whatever that describes what the cable is made of. I have zero way of validating that. Like I, you can't even necessarily see the cable, um, knowing the way that cables are made, like they're, you know, multiple materials wrapped around, you know, sometimes a core that's been insulated with something that obscures what's inside there. And like, I don't know. So like if, if someone told me, you know, here's a, here's a cable, it's 120 bucks because it's made out of, you know, gold wrapped with silver, I would have zero way of validating it myself. Uh, Cause I don't think that it changes the sound, at least not in my experience. I haven't heard a difference from these cables. I definitely don't know what a silver cable sounds like versus a copper cable. And if I can't even see what the material is, yeah, I don't know. So that's just a, another, another thing that kind of makes me hesitant to get very in, very interested and invested in whatever metal they're using. And Das Ninja Stick, you had the vote for the blue one, the blue OH1S gems by far, and I agree. Adam Mobius with another take. Uh, I'm not defending cables here, but to be fair, doesn't everyone claim uh, you can hear technical differences between IMs with the same tunings. Uh, is that is that a question about like um, whether or not like technical performance and frequency response are actually different things, or are they just in fact the same thing and people are kind of conflating them? Um, that might be what you were getting at there. And honestly, like that's a that's a, an interesting area. I think 
I've honestly not spent a lot of time like attempting to EQ IM so that they are producing exactly the same frequency response. And there's always the chance that once it's in your ear, it's actually producing something a little bit different than what you might be able to measure. So that's a little complicated, but honestly, it just, it seems unbelievable to me, but it could be the case. I, and the part that seems unbelievable to me is that frequency response is the only thing that matters. Um, just because, you know, I've listened to, let's say a number of balanced armature IMs, right? And I can't say they all sound exactly like they all have the BA timbre, but there are, you start to notice patterns um, in the in the sound that aren't just frequency response that do appear to be tied to the fact that it's a balanced armature and not a dynamic driver, especially in the bass, right? And if, if those are differences that don't show up in the frequency response, but a person can pretty clearly audibly perceive it seems it seems just not at all out of the realm of possibility in fact it seems more than probable that there are other characteristics to sound that are not represented by the frequency response uh, that said i'm not coming down as a as a hard zealot on either end or either side of that debate manny cracker Hi, Super. How is the West Coast? I hope it isn't as bad as it sounds. All the people taking poops in the street. My, my OH10s are outstanding, by the way, giving me these electric shocks. It's weird. Oh, that electric shocks. That doesn't sound like a good thing. I would maybe look at your cable or something. And there could be some grounding issue. That's not good. Um, As far as poops in the streets, that's very real in San Francisco, especially. Uh, I live pretty close to San Francisco. And in fact, um, before last year worked inside the city of San Francisco and poops on the street. It's a very real problem. Uh, fortunately, I don't have to worry about it too much out here where I'm at. Uh, otherwise, I like the West Coast. I like California. Uh, I live really co close to the ocean and, and access to hiking and stuff like that. So I like that. Certain things maybe I don't love about the West Coast, but for the most part, I'm pretty happy here. Das Ninja Stick saying, I want a car that is that blue. That, um, maybe that's part of why I like this blue so much, is it does remind me of the blue on, um, like the OG Subaru Impreza STI, the Rally Edition, especially if you got like the gold wheels, which just has a gold MMCX connector. I am a, a sucker for that color combination. And maybe that's why I like it. Cheebs, you're taking the other stance. You're saying that black is really cool, especially with that purple. And so I think, I guess it was a smart move on their part to release this in both both colorways because there seems to be about equal interest in either one. Gems Gorin saying, funny enough, my name is spelled exactly like Gems. So I was wanting a lot from these cries. Yeah, would you would you get satisfaction out of wearing an earphone that has the same name as you? Interesting. There's a lot of, so my name's Mark. There are a lot of earphones out there like Mark 1, Mark 2. Never, I've never, I've never connected that to myself, but maybe I should. MATLAB asking FIA Audio Legacy 2 or ARIA. That review should be coming probably within about a week or so. Um, I do have the Legacy 2 on hand. I have unboxed it. I have measured it. It is on squig.link, but my listening time for the past couple past week uh, since I got the, the Legacy 2 has been focused here on the gems as well as the new HANA. So um, that review will be coming up soon and I will definitely make that comparison. Robert B asking, do I think the Blessing 2 is really worth the price difference compared to the Aria or the FH3? And the answer is, yeah. Oh yeah. I think the Blessing 2 at around 300 bucks um, is probably the best price to performance ratio of anything that I've heard. Um, it's not the absolute best sounding earphone that I've heard, but um, I've heard some pretty expensive stuff. And honestly, it's competitive with some of the more expensive stuff that I've heard. So. Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, what you will get 
there's going to be obvious tonal differences between the FH3, the Aria, and the Blessing 2. The Blessing 2 is more my version of neutral. Um, it's more a little bit upper mid-range forward. Um, it's got a decent, a decent amount of lower mid-range warmth, but really not a lot. Uh, and then a fairly linear base. Um, so yeah, the Blessing 2 is my version of a, a neutral sound signature, whereas the Aria I would call kind of a, uh, a bassy light V. Um, the FH3 is kind of a bassy version of a neutral, a little bit, it's also mid-range focus, but a little bit, a little bit different of a tune. Um, the Blessing 2 is just, it's basically my preferred tuning. Um, and then I think also, I think with that you get next level uh, mid-range resolution especially. Like the texture that you get in vocal representations and stuff is just very, very satisfying. So yes, I think the Blessing 2 is well worth the 300 bucks. Johnny Welk asking, am I still listening to the JVC FDX1 or is there something else in my collection that has replaced it? And the answer is, yeah, I do. Every once in a while, go back to the FDX1. Um, in fact, not too long ago, what was I, what was I listening to? Um, it was a review I was doing recently. I can't even recall what it was at the moment, but um, yeah, not too long ago, I was listening to the FDX1 and reminding myself, this is a really good sounding single dynamic driver earphone probably the most technical single dynamic driver earphone that I've got, which just is a stand-in word for, I think, really, does really good with detail. Um, yeah, just generally detail and texture. I think the FDX one is fantastic. A little bit lean in terms of its tonal balance. Um, much closer to neutral than like V-shaped or anything like that. So it might be a little boring for some people, uh, but I think it's a really, really well executed IEM. Darkness Deep saying the new Hana was beautiful. Not too flashy, but beautiful. I worry if this gold wouldn't be easier than just white. Um, I know a lot of people are concerned about IMs, like, you know, especially when you get flashy finishes, worried about them chipping or wearing over time. And I understand why people are concerned about that. And I think just kind of based on my personal experience, I think that you as an individual have a lot of control over whether or not uh, a, a chip or something like that befalls your unit. I think um, how well you take care of your 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 things that you own, how you know will you put them away in a case, do you dangle them around by the cable? A lot of that is going to have a lot of influence in how well the the product holds up over time. So just from my personal uh, perspective, my personal history, I've never really had an IM. Uh, suffer you know chips or anything like that or really wear out over time i did break one iam one of my favorites the show cp by i had it on my bed stand because i was wearing it to bed and when i woke up in the morning i actually pulled the cable and it just kind of smacked against the side of my bed hit hard and basically broke one of the balanced armatures so that's the extent of how i've damaged uh, an in-ear monitor and I, I very much chalk that up to my own uh, abuse, I guess. That was that was a, a mistake I made, and unfortunately, that was the result. So, um, yeah, I guess I'm just saying, if you're worried about, you know, the Taj Mahana chipping or the, the Moondrop Starfield chipping, try and just take better care of your stuff. And I know that's not, that's definitely easier said than done, but uh, I really do think that, that you have the power to make that happen. Samsung Boy. Asking, why do you not review smartphones? It is better and bigger. Yeah, honestly, when I was reviewing smartphones, I got more views on the channel. Uh, I just kind of lost interest. My most most of my interest in reviewing smartphones initially, honestly, was um, I, I think at the time, like I'd spent a lot of time living with iPhone, and I was curious to check out Android. And I initially started with, you know, I bought the the Google Pixel two and lived with Android for a year or so. And I quite like that. And then, you know, there was just all this talk about differences between Pixel and Samsung. So I checked out Samsung. I was interested to check that out. Back on an iPhone now. And honestly, I'm just, I don't know. I don't I don't think that space is doing a whole lot that, that that is that interesting for me anymore. So yeah, it probably would be good for the channel if I reviewed more smartphones, but I'm just not that interested.
Gunnar Jones saying, uh, you were just trying to figure out which one to order. I'm not sure which one you're talking about. Um, you just sold the Polaris 2. I think it's a Campfire IM, and you're moving on to hopefully better IM with your Can N3 Pro. Yeah, um, if you want to check it out, actually, go to squig.link. In the header is a link to my rankings, or you can just go to squig.link forward slash list. I put together a tool of all of the IMs that I've reviewed and measured. I've got them sorted into different price categories with my scores, kind of updated scores too, um, and links to the frequency responses and my reviews. So you can kind of use that tool to figure out like, I wanna spend up to 500 bucks or whatever. Here are my favorite IMs at that price range. Hopefully that'll be helpful. Uh, and if it's not, let me know why not. And I, I'll love to update that tool. Das Ninja Sticks adding to the uh, the cable discussion. I'd roll tips before I'd swap cables if I were looking to change the sound signature of an IEM. And yeah, definitely I've noticed sound differences with tips. Um, and some of these sound differences I'm actually able to measure with uh, the, the frequency response changes. Um, if you're interested in checking those out, some of my measurements on squig.link I have made with multiple different ear tips. So the HANA is actually an example where I think I've got three or four different ear tips measured on the HANA. Um, so you can see how the tips actually affect the frequency response. Now, the, the, the caveat that I'll add there is that a lot of what, pretty much all of what's being affected by the ear tips, at least what I've been seeing, is in the treble response. And at that point, part of it could be caused by the tips, but part of it is also definitely caused by the coupling, right? So, um, Another way to put that is, is how well it fits. So if an ear tip fits deeper in your ear than another ear tip, that's gonna have a pretty significant effect on the, the treble response that you actually hear. I have heard ear tips that make an earphone sound sibilant. Maybe it doesn't even show up that big of a difference in the frequency response uh, if I measure it, but if I put it in my ear, one ear tip can sound sibilant and another ear tip cannot sound sibilant. Uh, and then I think that's just really due to how well it fits into my ear canal, how deep it fits into my ear canal. And if it doesn't get quite the right coupling, it can uh, elicit that sort of resonance that causes sibilance. Um, so yeah, ear tips can definitely affect stuff. I don't, I mean, by adjusting the, the treble response, you are kind of in effect, um, changing the, the 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 balance of you know let's say the bass but i've never really noticed the the bass changing with with ear tips it's definitely never measured a bass difference um but again because you are changing the treble response if you lower the treble you are effectively raising the bass in terms of the the the, the total balance of sounds You see fam TV asking, will I be considering reviewing over ear headphones? And yes, I'm always interested. Uh, hold on. I'm always interested to review headphones. I, I don't follow the headphone scene as much as I do with IMs, um, but I am actually reviewing this. This is a Sendy Iva. This is a review that will be coming up within the next couple of weeks. So very much into headphones and I have reviewed headphones in the past. Um, there's just frankly not as many new headphones coming out as there are, are IMs. IMs can keep me busy year round headphones. There's like a, a new notable headphone. I don't know, maybe like a couple times a year, which is interesting. Planet Jace, uh, you got pulled away from work. Wow. Shame for shame. No, that's cool. Uh, this isn't necessarily what needs to be done because this is primarily a visual medium, but some things are shown without being described. Uh, but your vids are great to listen to and sometimes look at to see something at various times. Yeah, that's kind of how I, I I deal with a lot of the, the YouTube content that I like to listen to versus watch. Uh, and then you also added Planet Jace. I've never had something get damaged like other people do. I use cases. I don't bash my stuff. I've had accidents. But apart from that, most of my stuff lasts forever and looks like new. And yeah, uh, I'm, look, I'm the sort of person that runs basically a caseless phone. Um, I do have a very thin case on it, but it's more just for grip than it is for you know drop protection. Um, so maybe I'm just... Uh, 
I live a little more dangerous. I'm a little bit less concerned about incidental damage, but also just, I don't know, try and be careful with your stuff if you care about it. M the Sage, I really love how they look, and I'm worried about the treble because from 2 to 13,000 hertz, I'm very sensitive. Well, if that 2 to 13,000 hertz includes 7,500 hertz, I would be very wary of the gems, unfortunately. Pepega Dragon, are you going to review DAC dongle or Bluetooth dongle such as the Shanling uh, or the BTR5? No, no plans. Um, I have a hard time differentiating most DACs, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, especially the dongles. Like, they mostly all just sound either good or bad. And most of them sound good. They sound fine. Um, they don't do anything in particular. So... There's not much for me to get me interested in them. I know a lot of people are really interested in the measurements aspect of that, and they can they can dive into into that kind of stuff. But for me, um, if I can't pick up a difference with my ear, I'm not that interested in it, to be perfectly honest. And that's how I feel about most DAC differences. And then the BTR thing you mentioned is a, a Bluetooth DAC, which is interesting. But I just I'm I don't I don't need Bluetooth for most of my stuff. If I'm gonna use a wired IAM, I'm just gonna plug it in directly into my uh, into my DAPs. I like DAPs better than, than those, so that's where I'm at. Theodore Zurla, you, got, you gotta get the new Mangard Zens up, making a lot of noise in the game. Yeah, uh, it sounds like people are pretty excited about the, the new Zens. Um, I haven't heard it, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get a chance to, to check it out. Sean Dontremont, glad to see you kept the hair. Thank you. Yes, I mean, I did get it cut. It's it's a little neater than it used to be, but we kept it kind of long. Scott Pledger, nice to see you join. Uh, and you're saying the BTR5 is great. Yeah, I know people love the BTR5. That's a Files little Bluetooth DAC dongle. Um, again, I just, I don't use a lot of Bluetooth, so I don't have much of a use case for that kind of product in my life. I did buy the Qtelix 5K, which is kind of a similar product, but I primarily use that honestly just for experimenting with EQ because it's got parametric EQ built into it. And I know there are parametric EQ apps out there for PC, but I'm a Mac guy, so I don't usually have access to that stuff. And Kai Road saying, I got the Low 2 Paw S1, which I think is another one of these DAC dongles. Uh, next to my BTR5, nice one so far, more natural sounding. Okay, okay. Yeah, there's some more discussion about the, the DAC dongles. Honestly, I would like to see someone do something a little bit more interesting with the DAC dongles, if I'm perfectly honest. And I've actually got a product design sketched up of a thing that I think would be more interesting than most DAC dongles out there. If uh, if anyone's out there curious about it, hit me up on Discord. I'll link you to my little presentation I put together. Um, but yeah, I think DAC dongles in their current form just don't appeal to me that much. I mean, I'll use them every once in a while, the Apple dongle especially, but it's like, if I'm gonna use a dongle, I don't really know why I would use something other than the Apple dongle. I mean, it's kind of cheap, cheaply made. It doesn't look that nice. And if I was really into it, maybe I would, I would want to optimize the aesthetics, optimize the feel and stuff like that. But uh, when I do use a dongle, it's just, it's more of like a, it's a temporary thing. Like I'm testing Apple music or I want to listen to something and I happen to have my iPhone with me. I'm watching a YouTube video or something. Um, not so much because I'm trying to turn my phone into my digital audio source. I'm still a DAP fan. Maybe, maybe one day that'll give, but for now, still a DAP fan. Jim Gorin, can we get another view of those new Hanas, please? Yeah, sure. Why not? Let's uh, let's pull in the new Hana. Again, review for this will be coming up soon, and I'll pull in the old Hana for comparison. 
And also worth calling out that this cable that is here on the new HANA is the same cable that comes with the original HANA. I just swapped it out for uh, an SSR cable because I think it looks a little bit nicer for my preferences, or I just, I think it goes better with the all white shells where here, well, there you go. This is a much blingier aesthetic. And I think that this cable goes better with the new HANA. So there you go. Again, review for this will be coming up in the next couple of days. I think Friday could be Saturday, no promises. Um, but there you go. Hopefully you got what you're looking for there. And Theodore, I'd be very interested in reviewing the, the unique melody mest. Um, I have reviewed some more expensive stuff, but, uh, I, I don't have the budget to buy that stuff for myself. So if Unique Melody is interested in having me do a review, I'd be happy to work with them on that. Um, but I'm not going to be able to spend, what is it, about 1200 bucks or so for the uh, the, the MES2. Um, not, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to do that. Matt Lab asking, would a perfectly flat IEM from 20 to 20,000 hertz sound good? I feel like it would be the most accurate to the source. Does such an IM exist? Or what is the closest one? And the answer is probably not actually. It probably would not sound good. So, and, and this is getting a little bit into, into the weeds of measurements and, um, and the science behind, you know, audio design, I suppose. Uh, not that I'm an audio design scientist, but from what I understand, um, I've never seen an IEM that measures perfectly flat uh, using something like an IEC 711 coupler, which is what I use, which is a lot, what a lot of IEM reviewers use, is we use the same thing. Now, you could probably design uh, one of these couplers that would measure the same exact IEM and get a completely different frequency response. You could make it perfectly flat if that's the way that you design the, the coupler. Um, but the coupler is kind of meant to imitate or, or replicate, simulate the inside of your ear and what, what happens to sound once it goes into your ear. And so that's why what you see um, is, well, that's not quite why what you see is not flat. I would say if uh, an IEM was producing a literal flat frequency response that an IEC 711 coupler would more or less show that. But why it might not be desirable is actually because of this thing right here. So your ear, essentially, this is, I'm probably gonna do this wrong, but your ear essentially works as kind of a, a horn. Um, and you can test this out yourself by, you know, talking to somebody uh, and like cupping your, your hand around your ear and you can notice how it amplifies and changes the frequency response of things that you're hearing. Like even your own voice will sound a little bit different to you, but especially voices of other people will start to sound different. Your ear is, you know, a smaller version of your hand cupped around your ear. And this amplifies certain frequencies above other frequencies. And basically those frequencies tend to be between like 2000 to 4000 Hertz, right? And this is what, this is why you hear people talk about, you know, the, the typical bump in a frequency response as ear gain or pin again. Um, if you had a perfectly flat response, it actually would not sound natural to most people because most people's ears are amplifying the sound between, you know, 1000 to 4000 Hertz. And when you're using an IEM, you're bypassing this part of the ear. So the frequency response that you have baked into an earphone kind of has to take in this ear gain uh, as an assumption. It has to, it has to make the assumption that, um, you know, the, the person's ear in order to sound natural is, is going to require uh, a rise in the frequency response between those frequencies. And that's actually probably part of why, actually, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to make a statement that I actually don't know is true or not, but I would say that's part of why I am's are likely more individual than headphones, headphones, right? They go over your ear, your, everyone's ears are different, but your ears are what you're used to. And so everyone's ears are amplifying or they're kind of interacting with um, an over ear headphone, right? The sound is coming out of the headphone. It's interacting with your ear, going into your ear and whatever ear gain is happening with your ear is what you're used to. That's what's normal for you, right? And IEM makes assumptions about what your ear gain is. 
and it because it bypasses the ear and that's why i would guess and again this is not like this is not research that i've done but i would guess that there is more variation in terms of what people prefer in IEM tuning than there is in headphones. I would guess headphones are a little bit more universal. Not that everyone agrees that, you know, uh, the M50X is the best headphone of all time or anything like that. But I would guess that, especially in that pinna region and that, that ear gain region, there's a lot more variety in what people, ex what people interpret as natural uh, using IEMs versus headphones. Just a hypothesis based on my very loose understanding of the science. <clears throat> oh, Cairo, you're saying that the Low 2 S1, that was the uh, the Low 2 um, dongle, has some parametric EQ presets baked into it. And so that's a pretty good example of how a, an external DAC dongle can actually differentiate itself beyond just being, you know, a, a headphone port that attaches to your phone. If you have like an app that lets you adjust EQ or maybe there's some presets or something built into it, that is definitely a way that you can differentiate. Uh, that makes a lot of sense to me. Oh, and Scott, pleasure. I see that you said in many fewer words than, than, than I did, so probably more effectively, uh, essentially describing the same thing about the ear gain. Robert B., how do you think the Blessing 2 would sound using just an iPhone and the dongle? I think it would sound fine. Yeah, the dongle's a great source. Um, as long as you don't need more power than the dongle can provide, and pretty much every IM that I've ever listened to will be plenty powerful, or plenty loud, when powered from an Apple dongle. Uh, Theodore is saying, most IM makers are now giving people the choice of a 3.5 millimeter, 2.5, or 4.4 millimeter cable. Which is the best choice in your opinion? 3.5, that's right, 3.5. I prefer just single-ended, I prefer, I mean, you'll notice that that's what I have on all of the IMs that I'm reviewing. I prefer 3.5 millimeter connectors. Uh, and that's just because of compatibility, right? If I'm moving from this DAP to this DAP to my MacBook, to maybe I'm gonna listen on my iPhone with a dongle. They all support 3.5 millimeter connections. I value, I personally value that compatibility, even though, you know, this player actually has a 4.4 millimeter connector and there's <clears throat> some good scientific explanations of why that might technically be the superior connector. I personally can't hear the difference. Uh, I would guess that most people can't hear the difference. Uh, I would be pretty skeptical of someone that told me they could very consistently hear that difference. Um, so I don't hear the difference. So for me, the, the compatibility matters a lot more. Um, so, I mean, I appreciate that manufacturers are including all those different cable options, whether it's swappable terminations, multiple cables in the packaging, or even just giving you an option when you buy the, the, the IM. I appreciate the options because I know for a lot of people it is important to have balance connectors, but for me, it's just not important. Yeah, and I see Dos Ninja Sticks and Dapper talking about adapters, which they, they do make. Um, I have a handful of adapters specifically for 2.5 millimeter and to, to, to 4.4 millimeter. They're nice and convenient to have, I guess, the, the, the option of using the adapters, but you're just adding more bulk to the whole thing. It makes it more of a pain. Look, look at how nicely roadie wrapped these cables are. If there was a, an adapter or a dongle or something hanging out the, at the end of it, it's not gonna look as tidy. And that might not matter to you at all. There's probably good reason why that doesn't matter to you, but it does matter to me. Um, so I'm not that interested in the adapters personally. Cheebs, thanks for backing me up. 3.5 millimeter is the best connector. I mean, if you wanted to be picky, like maybe quarter inch is the coolest just because it's so thick. Um, but 3.5 millimeter is the most compatible. And so for that reason, it's my favorite. And then Dapper Brick asking, I know you're more of an IM guy, but how do you feel about larger over your headphones? I 
I'd listen to them, right? I'm reviewing, <clears throat> I already pulled this on the camera, but I'm reviewing this. This is the Sendi Iva, um, an over-ear planar magnetic headphone. I've got over here to my right, I've got the Heifman Sendaro, which I'm comparing. Um, and my go-to is the Sennheiser HD 600. Um, I've also done a video in the past of showing you how you can mod a Sennheiser HD 58X to sound really satisfyingly neutral, at least to my ear. Um, so yeah, I love over-ear headphones, but I find IEMs, they're more collectible because they're so small and it's easy to, to, to hide the fact that you have a problem like I do. Um, I think IEMs, there's maybe more variety, like in that they're, they're a little bit more interesting in that way. Um, I think IEMs excel at things like sub bass as well versus a lot of, uh, a lot of headphones, even closed back headphones. Um, but closed back headphones suck, so don't bother with those. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I love headphones, but IEMs fit in my life in more places, so I do end up spending a lot more time listening to IEMs personally. And then Dapper, you're also asking on the top of cables, have I seen the Moondrop PCC coaxial cable? It's 40 bucks and has three interchangeable ends, no dongles or adapters needed. Um, I've seen Moondrop swappable cable if we're talking about the same one. Uh, it's a little bit bulk, like the, the termination is maybe a little bit bulkier than your standard 3.5 millimeter termination. But yeah, I think that that is a pretty good solution, kind of reminiscent of what Dunu does with their cables. I like Dunu's execution a little bit better. File also had a really good execution on the FD5 and the FH5S where the terminations look basically like standard terminations, a little bit bigger than this, but they look basically like standard terminations, but they unscrew and then you can screw on a 4.4 millimeter or 2.2 millimeter, uh, 2.5 millimeter connector if you wanted to. So both of those are pretty good options. Um, but for me, I'm also just perfectly happy with 3.5. What makes me really, I don't want to say unhappy, but what annoys me is when an IEM comes with only a 2.5 millimeter cable, because then I have to use an adapter. Because I don't use any sources that have 2.5 millimeter connectors currently. I have some, but they're not what I usually use. I usually use things that have, you know, either 3.5 millimeter, the vast majority, or sometimes a 4.4 millimeter. So if I get a cable that comes, or I get an IEM that comes with a 2.5 millimeter cable, I'm definitely gonna have to use an adapter and it's definitely not gonna roadie wrap this tidy. Does it matter? Yeah. Uh, Jim, I have not heard the TFZ essences, no. And Dapper Black, yes, good point. The Dunu cable is a really nice execution, but their cables are expensive. I know they do have one that's, I think, $80. The, I'm going to say this wrong. The, Yep, I'm not even going to try. The, it's the O2, the DW02, maybe. Um, it's like 80 bucks, so it's still definitely pricey for a cable, but not as crazy as some of their two, $300 cables. Yeah. Kyrode asking, can I say something about Dusk versus S8 mid-range? Is the S8 much more shouty? Um, I'll be honest, it's been a really long time since I compared the S8 and the Dusk directly. I did my review of the S8, I believe, after I did my review of the Dusk, and so I probably did that comparison there. Um, for the most part, I mean, there are some differences in the tuning uh, between the two and... Look, shouty is just not a word I, I generally use to describe IMs, and possibly that's because uh, I prefer more upper mid-range than, than most folks. So um, the S8 tuning, is it a little bit more forward than the Dusk? Yeah, probably a little bit. Um, but yeah, again, I, I, I haven't listened to them recently, so if you want that comparison, I would just go back to my S8 review, or I might have mentioned it there. And folks, actually, we are coming at 4.30 where I have an appointment to call my mom. So I'm going to have to go ahead and end this live stream. I want to thank you all for tuning in, hanging around, having a chat, asking questions. If you're interested in more questions, of course, I do have a link to my Discord server in the description down below where you can join and chat. I'm there way too much. 
Um, but otherwise, subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, and I'll catch you on the next Super Review. Have a good week.